This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hey you, my name is Thomas Tom Scott Ridgewell and I tried to get fired. I did. I did it for you. I did it for a laugh so that I could make this stupid video and tell you this stupid story. It is a tale of going too far or perhaps of not going far enough. But most importantly, it is a tale about the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Really thought there'd be an ad there. So to tell the story, I think I first need to lay a bit of a foundation and explain my history with ads or sponsored videos here on YouTube. It's more interesting than it sounds on paper, okay? I promise. The first ad I ever made on YouTube was 12 years ago and it is simultaneously my best performing sponsored video and also my lowest paid sponsored video, bringing in over 20 million views and making me just 100 pounds. I was approached by, I think, someone working at a very small marketing agency as a part of this Marmite campaign. They said, hey, would you do a video where you you joke about how much you hate Marmite for this love it or hate it campaign. And I went, yeah, I love Marmite, but I'll do whatever you tell me to for a sweet 100 pounds. And I made Ast of Might. Honey, I'm home. Marmite, what are you doing? I'm sleeping with your wife, John. And yeah, it was fun. There was no contract. Nowhere did it say the standard do not put other ads on this video rule. So I had ads enabled the whole time and I've made plenty of money from it. So it all worked out in the end. The next year in 2011, I made my Band University of Lincoln advert series, which also did really well. I just made them for fun. They weren't, they weren't even paying me. In fact, I was paying them to be at that university. I'm really bad at business. The university of their hair. But this kind of then set the standard for how I would approach doing any sort of sponsored content. I had something that I could lift up and show brands or marketing agencies what I was capable of doing if allowed to do it the way I wanted to do it with this sort of like comedy sketch, anti-advert viral marketing thing. But the style and success of those videos is then what shaped how I would approach sponsored videos for pretty much the rest of my life. I would make these sort of viral, outrageous, almost anti-adverts that would be shared because of how crazy it was that a brand would even allow this to be done. And this worked really well for about five years. Between the years of 2012 and 2017, I made a lot of bespoke branded sketches in what I kind of call the wild west of YouTube ad times where no companies really knew how much a view was worth and so the amount of money that people would put into it was random. You'd have one company come up to you and say make 10 videos for a thousand pounds and then another company would say make one video for 20,000 pounds. It just There was no consistency. It was a wild time. I had a lot of strange experiences. I once made a branded sketch for a video game. We put something like 8,000 pounds into just making the video, renting the location, getting the cast and equipment and the visual effects only for the video game to come out and do so badly that the company that had hired us paid me to not release the video and the video was good and i'm done you never take me anywhere nice it was a great video, I think. I it ended up remaking and releasing that video anyway, but the game was doing so badly that the company was like, we want to remove any trace that this ever happened. I want a divorce because you look like a horse. I love it. I once worked on an ad campaign where I was explicitly told to not disclose that I'd been hired to make this video, which was something that I did anyway before there were even rules in place. Unsurprisingly, when the video came out, there was a complaint made to the Advertising Standards Authority here in the UK, and the entire campaign got pulled, and the creators were left with the blame, even though, again, we were the ones told to not disclose it. I got so upset that I basically demanded that they hire me again as an apology. Hi, guys. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. I really can't. I once worked on another campaign that also got to the stage of completion. The video was ready to be uploaded, but then this massive scandal happened where it turned out that the marketing department of this company had not cleared the campaign with the legal department of this company and the whole thing got scrapped. We still got paid and luckily I kind of felt like something was fishy, so we had made the video in a way that we could just remove the elements about the brand and then still upload it. Best paid for sketch I've ever made, and you never found out who paid for it. Hey! Are you an alien? Cause you're out of this world. 
realize that I may have only focused on the negative uh, campaigns there, so uh, if you're a brand watching this, they usually go really well. And also in, in those stories, none of it was my fault. I'm just slightly cursed. Please still hire me. However, after 2017, we enter what I consider the, the Dark Ages. This is where the Wild West of YouTube ads abruptly wrapped up, at least for me, and suddenly no companies were willing to take a chance on a bespoke branded comedy sketch. They only wanted ad reads. The very standard type of ad read that you've seen dozens of times before here on YouTube, where the video will just suddenly say, hey, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video. It's this brand or this product, and I'm going to list three things that I personally definitely like about this that 10 other YouTubers have also mentioned, and use my promo code, etc, etc. You know the kind. Suddenly that's all that was available on YouTube, and I basically just like didn't really do anything for a few years. I even left my management because there was no work to be found. We would get approached by brands, I would send them sketch ideas, they would get rejected, they would just say, hey, can you just do an ad read? I would say there's no way to work an ad read into the middle of a three minute sketch, and all these relationships kind of fell apart. It just kind of sucked to be honest. I did do a few of those sort of standard ad reads in this time, but they were only on this channel where I was making videos long enough that you could just cut away to me talking about something for a minute without it completely destroying the video. But I wasn't happy. It wasn't a good time. I was very sad. But then in 2020, I saw something that reignited a flame inside of me that sparked hope once again that I would be able to continue doing things the way I like to do them while also getting paid, which is pretty important. I'll be honest. I was watching a video by Internet Comment Etiquette when he cut to a sponsored segment, and I was getting ready to skip through it, as let's be honest, we all do, when suddenly I realized that it was a sketch. That it was a pretty high production value comedy sketch that was just incorporating the sort of ad read points that we're all used to, but it was funny and it was enjoyable. Sean, wait, what was the coupon code? Sean, what was the coupon code? And I realized, oh my god, there is a space for sketches in ads again. Th oh, thank you, God. So, later that year, when I was approached by a certain mobile game, famous for very aggressive, talking point, heavy ads. We'll call them the Schmade Schmadow Legends. And I would never have normally even considered doing because there was just no way to kind of even remotely, tastefully, or entertainingly uh, do an ad like that. I had something to show them. I, I showed them Eric's ads and said, could I do something like this? Would you allow that? And they went, look, if you can get the talking point into the video, go right ahead. And I made a couple ads for them that I thought were pretty funny and, and I think people kind of enjoyed. Ooh, how does 2020 end? It doesn't. Yeah, that scans. I was back in the game, baby! <laughs> Why am I saying it like that? I was back in the game, baby! So here enters the heroes of this story. Surfshark VPN. Actually, maybe I'm the hero of the story. They're the subject. No, that's capitalism. Surfshark are here, is the point. Hello, Surfshark. How are you doing? You can't talk? Because you're just a, an icon of a company's logo? I should have written a script. <laughs> so the way that an ad read finds its way into your eye and ear holes kind of goes like this. First, you have a brand. That brand has a product. They tell their marketing department that product needs to be promoted. That marketing department will reach out to an ad agency to come up with a campaign. Part of that campaign will most likely feature influencer marketing. Hey, that's me. So that ad agency will then reach out to talent management who represent influencers. Hey, that's me. And ask if they want to do the campaign or tell them depending on the relationship that influencer has with their agency. Some of them are quite aggressive, I won't lie. So with that in mind, we have Surfshark VPN who reaches out to ad agency Digital Voices. Digital Voices is a little different from a lot of ad agencies because it is formed by one of my ex YouTube partner managers, Jenny, who therefore just kind of understands creators and content and there's a lot more of a, just a symbiotic understanding of how much cool stuff can be made. It's not just say the talking points, dance monkey dance, it's hey monkey, how would you like to dance today? <laughs> and I love them for it. So Digital Voices reaches out to my management. My management contacts me. Bada bing, bada boobly boo. I make some videos for Surfshark. The first few videos I do for Surfshark are pretty straightforward, to be honest. I'm not really trying to rock the boat right now. I'm very grateful for any work. I do a few somewhat bespoke videos here on this channel, and I do some pretty straightforward ad reads on my main channel, but ultimately, 
Nothing too crazy. They're funny. They're wacky, but you know, this is normal stuff. Boom! Surfshark just virtually relocated you, and now you can. Oh no, I'm in France now! So because the ads I'm making are assumedly having a sufficient ROI, return on investment for the brand, basically the amount of profits, business, brand awareness they are generating from my ads is worth the amount of money they're paying me to make those ads, Surfshark approached me with a nine video deal. Which is really exciting, a contract. I've never actually had one of those before. A lot of people don't come back for seconds. Don't know why. I'm very good looking. <laughs> so with the prospect of guaranteed work, I finally feel confident enough to take some risks again. Something I haven't done for about four years now. And I say, hey, check out these ads I did for Schmade Schmado Schmedgens. What if I do nine sketches like this for these nine videos? And to my surprise, they go, yeah, okay. Oh, cool, dude. No, that's, that's sick, man. And the campaign was a go. And look, I know it sounds grossly capitalistic and potentially insincere and if nothing else just a little cringe but I was excited. I really look forward to the opportunity to prove myself and 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 and, and to succeed at a challenge and the challenge of making an ad that is interesting and entertaining and somewhat unskippable is exciting. It's different. It's something that I really enjoyed doing for those years on YouTube where I would make bespoke sketches and I finally felt an opportunity to have fun and do it again. My brain's wired weird and I like making money and jokes simultaneously, all right? So cut me some slack. Now, if you all remember at the start of this video, I said that I tried to get fired by Surfshark VPN. That's still true. We just haven't got there yet. So buckle in because it's time for the next chapter of this video. I, does this ha video have chapters, Elliot? I don't know. It does now. Oh, time to watch one of my favorite TV shows. A beep. Hey, you. Who? Me? No, you! Ah! Have you ever heard of Surfshark VPN? I've heard of a shark. So this ad was pretty straightforward. I didn't try to be edgy with it. I did not want to bite the hand that feeds me and provoke the people putting food on my plate. And you know I love food. <laughs> So the video was pretty straightforward, bar a joke about the nature of the oversaturation of ads on YouTube. Something that makes me laugh every time is when, you know, influencers act like neither they nor you have ever heard of this thing. Like, you guys, you ever heard of Surfshark VPN? Like, of course you have. We all have. That's the way these ads work, is that you're reminded of it so often that when you finally do think, oh, I need a, a VPN, you go, oh, I've heard about that one enough times. We know. Do we, do, why are we pretending we don't? And the answer is sometimes the brand doesn't want you to. One thing I was excited to do with this ad though was to cannibalize a chunk of a script from an old Oreo ad that got scrapped midway through production wherein a character just keeps saying, do I, inappropriately, uh, until I snap and, and yell at him. <gasps> Do I? I don't know, Elliot, do you? <laughs> you are giving me nothing to work with. The gag's not even that funny, but I was just glad to finally be able to use it. And in a very mild, but still pleasantly surprising turn of events, the ad is approved by Surfshark with no notes. Hooray. Will Surfshark fill the crushing void that I feel in my soul? Will you buy it if I say yes? Yes. Yes. No. It's also worth noting here that I'm not communicating directly to Surfshark. In theory, I should be talking to my management who talks to Digital Voices, who talks to Surfshark, but instead I'm talking directly to a contact at Digital Voices, uh, who we will call for this video, Blorpo. My friend Blorpo. <laughs> Surfshark, am I right, kids? This effort is weird. Tell me about it. <gasps> you killed my husband! You killed my planet! <laughs> Horse Wars Season 5, airing now. <gasps> but not in your country, nerd. <gasps> oh well, I guess I have no choice but to pirate it. My new eye patch. So, my main channel sketch, One Man 27 Impressions, is actually the result of five sketches that we attempted to write that could be filmed remotely during lockdown, none of which we ended up going ahead with, but the jokes from them we kind of cannibalized and just put into the sketch One Man 27 Impressions. However, we still had the the sketch formats and the, the core idea of these five sketches, and I, I don't like things going to waste, so uh, I, I wanted to put them to use and use them as the basis for a lot of the sketches that are now to come, one of them being this one. So the original version of the Angel vs. Devil sketch never went ahead because it was simply too offensive. However, in honor of the originally edgier version of this script, I do try to push the boundaries a little bit. You know, we, we talk about 
murdering children and 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 having a psychotic break and acknowledging the idea of using Surfshark to, to pirate things and and also swearing. You know, these are all things that normally, if I made an ad, I would a hundred percent expect to be cut. Even even when I email them the script, I say I'm treading into dark and edgy territory here, so I expect some pushback. Let me guess, you're here to encourage piracy. I think you should burn down a school. Oh! Holy shit! Yeah, I'm a demon. I'm evil. Ooh, actually, maybe an orphanage would be better. There's this uh, theory that I, I read about once, this practice. Um, I'm not sure if it was for, like, Animaniacs or South Park, but the basic idea is that you write in jokes that are really out there, knowing that the censors will cut them so that they don't notice the less edgy jokes that you actually care about. Like, censors and sometimes even, you know, middlemen in, in, in the chain of, of, of an ad will just try to cut jokes just for the sake of doing their job. Um, you know, they need to be seen doing things. So sometimes we will work in jokes that are really out there knowing they're going to cut them just so they'll leave the rest of the script alone. And that's kind of what I was trying to do here. However... <laughs> I don't think Elliot's doing okay. Maybe you should call an ambulance. Or you could set fire to him. <laughs> oh yeah, let's do that one! Once again, approved with zero notes. And at this point, I realize I'm being challenged. Are you challenging me? So if you'll remember, I have a handler at Digital Voices, Blorpo. You remember Blorpo, right? You can't forget Blorpo. Well, Blorpo has gone on a holiday and has left their duties in the competent care of Gurg. Gurg says to me, Tom, I love the sketches. I get it. I get it. I get what you're about. God damn, those are good sketches. However, what if you uh, didn't do a sketch this time? What if you were normal? Why can't you be normal? Why can't you just be normal? And you know what? I get where Gurg's coming from. However, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to. So I ignored Gurg for an entire month until Blorpo got back from holiday, at which point I said, check this script out, Blorpo. Sorry, Gurg. <laughs> Elliot. Ah! You've got to get Surfshark, Elliot. Ah! Surfshark VPN. Ah! What? So at this point, I'm testing the waters. I want to know what the boundary is. So I'm throwing in references to killing the queen. I'm, I'm bringing back up those murdered kids. I'm name dropping Schmade Schmado Schmedgens. I, I want to know what, what my limits are here. My unfinished business, it's done. Finally, I can ascend to heaven. Uh, oh, no, no, yeah, that makes sense. Probably shouldn't have killed all those kids. And sure enough, I finally get a note. They say, you listen here, buddy. When you say you can change your location using Surfshark to access Netflix and watch Afterlife in a different country, that doesn't make any sense because Afterlife is available in every single country on Netflix. So, not so much a note, more of a more of a cinema sin. Afterlife is already available in every country. But I've already written the joke. However, aside from that, the ad is once again approved with no notes, and I'm beginning to wonder what it is they'd actually say no to. Have you heard about Raid? Ah! Go ahead, skip this ad. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, skip this ad too. Yeah, I will. All right, you son of a bitch. I gave you a chance, but you're gonna watch this ad and you're gonna like it. Okay. Fuck it. At this point, I have to know what the line is. I have to know what Surfshark are gonna shoot down. So I start working in things that I know you should absolutely not put in an ad. I'm talking about direct threats, violence, coercion, name dropping rival brands, really just basic stuff that Firmly is not allowed. Can Nord do that? I don't know! And I'm not saying that my mental state is already beginning to unravel, but I start messaging Blorpo exclusively with GIFs. And Blorpo responds, not only approving the script with no edits once again, but also in GIFs! And I'm not sure if they knew I was the one in that horse mask, or if it was just a weird coincidence, but either way, they're fucking with my head. They're fucking with my head. Hello there, my name is Dr. Matt. Today we're going to be learning how to perform the Heimlich Maneuver. Wait, why did I want to watch this? Oh! Oh, no! Hey, Andy. Hello, I'm Andy, your personal assistant. I need a VPN. 
a virtual private network, I can recommend 8,352 for the right price. All right, you know what? If it's war they want, it is war they shall have. Eddie is now, let's just say, sex offender coded. That's where we're going. That's where you have pushed me. Can I access content? <laughs> With over 3,200 servers across 65 countries, you should be able to access content that's not available or prohibited. Or prohibited in your country. Jesus Christ. And I'm prepared to go hard. I'm getting props commissioned. We, we are going cinematic with this. Do it! If you click the link in the description and use the code TOMSCARFRIENDS, you'll get 83% off your subscription and three months extra for free. Thank you. You're a monster. <laughs> And still, the script gets approved with no edits. And I'm sending Blorpo memes. I'm losing it, okay? And you know what? Sure, you can approve the script, but I'm gonna add in jokes that weren't even in the script. I'm gonna talk about how I'll recommend anything for the right price. I'm implying that I'm insincere with my recommendations. I, I'm, I'm gonna throw in a little Lego penis. Welcome to the dark web. Today, I'm gonna be showing you some illegal Lego building techniques. <sighs> yes. <sighs> Finally! <laughs> stop, stop it. Stop, no. That's no, no! Still, approved with no edits. What is going on? At this point, I'm so desperate to find the limit that I am erring into territory that even I am uncomfortable with. Specifically, themes like coercive suicide, as I canalize another script that I never made because I felt like it was too potentially harmful. But I'm getting lost in the source here. I, I have to know. You're ugly. You're stupid. Everybody hates you. I hate you. She is uh, never coming uh, back. Uh, you have uh, such uh, an annoying uh, laugh. <laughs> <sighs> Tired of convincing your FBI agent to kill themselves just to keep your browsing history secret? I wish there were another way. There is! What?! And still, the script gets approved with no edits, so when it comes time to shooting it, I'm shoehorning in jokes that they never approved of, like seeing a gun and blood and, and death, and still they're fine with it. But what if I've got a taste for it? What if I become addicted to the unparalleled thrill of convincing another human to end their life? What if the dark lust I feel for this godlike power has corrupted my heart, my soul beyond salvation? Then maybe just use Surfshark to access American Netflix. <laughs> Neato! They can't keep letting me get away with this! So, at this point, I think it's fairly safe to say that I'm having a crisis of confidence. I am doubting my ability to ever find the limit for Surfshark. I am prepared to do something that I think will get me fired because I just, I have to know. I am prepared to do something drastic, hardcore, well and truly insano style, but then the unexpected happens. Blorpo goes missing. Where's Blorpo? You see my friends, Blorpo had gone to a wedding, and Gerg had once again been left in charge of Blorpo's workload, that workload including me, and I knew there was no chance in hell that I was ever going to get the script I was hoping to write past Gerg, so I have to write something safe. And I'll admit, I'm not proud of it. This script is, you know, it's fine. Blackmail? No, I'm actually white. Oh, I'm so sorry. If I'd submitted it earlier into this campaign, I would have thought, ooh -hoo! I'm pushing the boundaries, but I know at this point, it's, it, this is nothing. This is nothing. This is the, the smallest little potatoes. You see these potatoes? You can't see them because they're too small. This is kid, kid gloves, child's play, other metaphors for small things and children. No surf shark does not work on your toaster. I don't care. I, I don't even have one. And yeah, of course, it's approved with no edits. Fuck! Even with the explosion and, and, and whatever the fuck this is. God damn it! Ah! What happens next are the actions of a truly desperate man. You see, when I went into this, I said that I was looking forward to the challenge of creating an entertaining ad. But it turns out that wasn't the actual challenge. No, the challenge was to find Surfshark's breaking point and I would do anything. I'd do anything to find it. I have to know. I say, you know what guys? Maybe I'll just do a, a really brutal torture scene. How you like that? And they said, yeah, we'll like that. Do it. Do it, you fucking coward. So, okay. All right, fine. This is how it's going. We're not even going to threaten violence. I'm, I'm not sticking guns in people's faces and saying you should get Surfshark VPN. I'm, I'm killing people now. I'm outright saying I'm going to kill you if you don't get Surfshark VPN. They can't approve that. 
They can't. Please don't. I, I don't want to say this is a reflection of the unhinged state of mind. I was in- I, I started sending Family Guy memes, okay? Family Guy memes. Look what I've been reduced to! I made Aston movie! <laughs> and then the email comes through. I'm sorry, Tom, but I am afraid I'm going to have to approve this video. What are they? What's wrong with them? What's wrong with them? So fuck it. If we're doing this, we're doing this. I'm booking locations. I'm calling in a crew. I'm ordering in a knuckle duster from America. That's illegal. Thomas Ridgewell would like to make it known that as the item was intended as and used for a prop, it is no longer illegal. And also it was listed as a paperweight. So. <laughs> Do you like my videos, Joel? There was a joke where we were supposed to see Eddie's slumped, headless corpse with the sign around his neck saying, traitor, but unfortunately Eddie couldn't be there on the day. But fortunately, I already had a bin bag full of body parts. Eddie is already fucking dead! I don't even know why I have those. One thing I also really wanted to get for this video was a taser, a stun gun, but it is impossible to get those in the UK, even as props. So we had to duct tape a microphone and you know what? You didn't notice, shut up. <laughs> So we shoot the video, we edit the video, we're getting sound design, we're getting an original score, we're getting visual effects and extra blood added. I'm saying throw more blood on the floor, have, have blood dripping off this. I, I want things to look unapprovable, horrendous. Like I said, I don't fucking care if they, they reject the video and I have to film it again. I don't care if they fire me. I have to know. I have to know. And that's when I realize that maybe there's a chance they're gonna approve the blood. They're gonna approve the gore. What, they might. I don't know anymore. So I think I'm gonna break a rule of this campaign because I know that Surfshark wanna see the product in the video. They wanna see cutaways. They wanna see demonstrations of, of how it, it works. I'm not gonna include that in the edit. I'll have the little text on the screen saying use the code, but I'm not gonna cut anything away. They'll have to give me notes on that. And at this point, I'd count that as a win. Just them saying, look, we're fine with all the murder, but you better show us changing location on Netflix and watch a boy howdy. Do I have some terrible news for you? Immediate approval. No notes. How many more does Surfshark need us to get? Just one. Oh God, I can't do this anymore. There have been some dark times in my life, in my career, points when I felt hopeless. And you know what, maybe this was one of them. Much as I hate to admit it, Surfshark won. There is nothing I think I can put in one of these ads that wouldn't also get me banned off YouTube. And while I can handle losing a brand deal, I really do need the income from my channel in general. So, uh, congratulations Surfshark, uh, you win. They don't give a fuck. Surfshark doesn't give a fuck about a lot of things. For example, how many boundaries I have to cross to promote them, but they also don't give a fuck about how you use their service. If you want to use Surfshark to circumvent region-locked content, they don't just allow it, they let me show you how easy it is to do it. With over 3200 servers across 65 countries, Surfshark also doesn't care what your government, boss, or internet service provider says you can or cannot access because they'll help you go anywhere and see anything. And I mean anything. But if there's one thing Surfshark does give a fuck about, it's privacy and secrets. Yours, mine, maybe even theirs. So if you want to Google things that would make God herself cry, Surfshark won't just keep your browsing history safe from prying eyes, they won't store it anywhere either. They really truly do not give a fuck. So click the link in the description and use code TOMSCARFRIENDS for 83% off your subscription to Surfshark VPN and three months extra for free. Because if enough of you do, they might keep paying me to make these ads. And I think that's something we all give a fuck about. Thanks, Surfshark. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money, money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money, money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money, money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money, money. Thank you, patrons. We appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.